Ladies and gentlemen, I present Final Zone 2, an average overhead run and gunner with a legendary, often horrible presentation. Some would say it's so bad that it's so good. Well, you be the judge. A secret military society called the Zod, who specialize in ultra-modern weapons, has attacked. No, not that Zod. Luckily, Captain Bowie captured five of their New Age power suits and is now ready to kick some Zod behind. No, not that Zod. Sadly, Bowie and his squad were taken by surprise and attacked, being blown into space. Now, Bowie must meet up with his comrades, get a new plan together, and... Let me show them some fancy action now. Oh yeah, my friends. Fancy action. <laughs> this story unfolds through numerous cutscenes between each of the game's seven stages. In early CD-ROM fashion, they're kinda cool, but not all that interesting here. Damn you! Bastards of the Confederate forces! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Language. <laughs> but let's face it, the cheese factor and horrendous voice acting in these sequences? Don't let him pass! Arrest him! Ah, <sighs> makes me happy for some reason. When the gameplay begins, you control Bowie, firing in eight directions and locking into place if button two is held down. You also have a limited bazooka slash secondary weapon available by pressing button one. And, well, you walk around the stage, pick off enemies who are firing like this or like this, and there isn't much else really. This play style continues throughout most of the game. It's not bad, a little fast paced and fun for a bit, with a boss waiting for you at the end. In the next stage, you play as Hannah, who controls pretty much the same but has a different secondary weapon. In the third stage, you play as Velder, but the game switches things up to an overhead helicopter shooter. It is a nice change of pace. Too bad this variety only lasts for one stage, as the rest of the game returns to overhead run and gun. Or fly and gun. If you hate me so much, Shoot me with your gun. Um, as opposed to shooting me with what? The game now gives you an option to select from different characters, which is kind of neat. One isn't that much different from the other, though, aside from a couple of small attributes. For example, Momoko won't shoot while locked, while Velder wields this useless thing. Yeah. Trust me, it sucks. Someday, you'll end up like my brother. <coughs> Damn! Defeated enemies will often leave behind items for health, power, and weapons. They do help, but are pretty evenly spaced, as I never felt desperate to find one in a stage. Everything minus the helicopter area looks similar. Grass, trees, familiar enemies. That is, until the end, where it's a welcome but bizarre change. Just don't mess up and select Veldir here. Oh, man! Oh no, I am not keeping this guy. When you lose a life and notice the screen just fades to black, look, you're still firing as it fades out. You can continue from the stage you left off. You can also select a different character if you like, so trust me, use this to your advantage if you want someone new. Ah, that's better. That's what you should have done in the beginning. The gameplay graphics are serviceable. They're colorful, and a few little effects are present, like changing from night to day, unless that's just a glitch. But as I mentioned, for most of the game, there isn't much of a change from area to area, and it's all rather plain. 
The music is pretty good with some upbeat and catchy tunes. It creates a nice ambiance and for the most part, works well. But then you have these out of place vocal tracks like on the title screen. And the fourth stage, which is like a pop song. Okay, that's just weird. The sound effects are awful. Everything sounds like a splat. You have a couple other effects, but nothing really stands out and they're all a bit too loud. Thank goodness you have this in the background. <laughs> Your character moves around the screen pretty quickly, so you'll be performing a lot of spinning and dodging. It's best to just take it slow, a little at a time. The controls are pretty responsive though, and get the job done, for the most part. Only six of us survived. Oh, oh. There is not much else to say about Final Zone 2, really. It is an average game, easy to beat, and it won't take you long to finish, no matter which characters you choose. To me, unlike Last Alert, which also has that early CD-ROM cheese factor, this game isn't as lengthy, varied, or as much fun. Nothing is broken, but many say it's all rather mediocre. I can't disagree. I do applaud the game for having multiple playable characters and switching gameplay up that one time. But in the end, you play through a stage just to hurry up and get to the awful, over-the-top acting and writing. That might just put a smile on your face, but for all the wrong reasons. The guy who tricked us is hiding somewhere. You mean Aleph Ruman? Hello, Ruman. Final Zone 2 does hold some nostalgic value for me and others, and I still find a weird enjoyment from it. But I can't recommend the game, as the gameplay itself is only average. However, if you are someone who can laugh along with its crap factor, I would say... Rounding up a bit to two and a half is my rating for you. But if you don't find this bizarre presentation intriguing in the slightest, I would avoid it like the plague. Or at least, like a bazooka.